Welcome to the third tutorial of the Getting Started tutorial series of the SimScale platform. In the next few minutes, we will carry out a complete simulation using SimScale. To give you an impression on what we will work, um, you can see here a CAD model of a differential casing. And um, the simulation we will carry out is that uh, we have um, heat loss at the inside, two different heat sources basically, and uh, heat is um, transported through the differential casing. And um, on the outside, we have a natural convection happening where the um, heat is given to the or transported to the environment. And um, we are interested in the thermal behavior of this casing. So how to run such a simulation with SimScale? Let's get started. SimScale works completely via your web browser, so there is no need uh, for any installation or plugins whatsoever. We go to simscale.com, type in our login credentials, and we're good to go. Here we can see that we only have the um, Tutorial 03 project in our workspace um, with just one CAD model of the differential casing. We switch to the Mesh Creator, click on the CAD model tree icon, and the CAD model of this differential casing is loaded directly in the 3D viewer and we can interact with it and use different uh, visualizations. The simulation we will carry out is based on the finite element method. So we will generate a finite element mesh clicking on mesh geometry, which automatically creates a mesh on the left in the tree. Um, we will specify the operation that we will use to generate the mesh. Uh, we give it a name, we choose the uh, volume tet meshing, um, we leave it as first order, the finest is set to coarse, and we will use a four core machine to carry out this um, meshing process. The job status box in the lower left keeps us updated on the progress of the mesh operation. And after a few moments, um, as soon as the mesh is fully computed, um, we get it back and it is directly loaded in the 3D viewer and we can check on the volume mesh that um, has been generated. The, um, the operations log um, tells us a little bit more about how the mesh operation went and how um, yeah, some statistics uh, of the mesh. Now that we've generated the mesh, let's uh, set up the actual simulation. We switch to the simulation designer, click on new simulation, give it a meaningful name, and um, then the new simulation appears in the left in the tree, on the left in the tree. Um, the first step in each simulation setup on SimScale is to choose the actual analysis type that we want to use. In our case, we are choosing a heat transfer simulation. We um, uh, choose it to be steady state, so we will neglect transient effects. And uh, the tree is automatically expanded as soon as I save the analysis type. The green tree icon means that the um, item is already specified. The red one means that uh, I need to define something. And the blue is an optional um, item. The first one is to choose the actual domain where I um, choose the mesh that, I, uh, that we just generated a minute ago. It is automatically loaded in the viewer on the right. To simplify the boundary condition assignment, I will now um, group the faces or the relevant faces of the um, mesh together to face sets. So I first choose the first heated region um, using um, these uh, faces. Um, and I click on the topological entity sets icon and um, I click on the button, uh, create a face set um, from view selection and give it a meaningful name. Um, the second one, I choose um, the other inner region here that is heated from the inside. Um, and again, I click the Create Entity Set button, give it a meaningful name. And last but not least, I want to group the outside faces together where the natural convection um, shall happen or where I will assign a natural convection boundary condition. So uh, having them grouped together, again, I'm creating the face set. And then I simply work my way through the tree from top to bottom and continue setting up all items. Um, the next one is the materials uh, item where I can see that it's still red. I uh, import aluminum from the material library. I leave uh, all the default settings. I uh, assign it to the volume of the differential casing and I can see that the icon uh, gets green. 
I um, will leave the initial conditions as they are and continue to set up the boundary conditions. I can see that I have temperature boundary conditions and heat flux boundary conditions. And the first one that I will set up is the, the inner heat loss um, for the first uh, phase set in, from the inside of the differential casing. I choose the surface heat flux, give um, the heat flux or specify the value and assign it to the heated region one. And here you can see that the topological entity sets um, yeah, really help to, to set up the boundary conditions um, very fast. Um, the second boundary condition is again a surface heat flux also coming from the inside um, at this uh, phase set. And last but not least, I'm setting up a natural convection boundary condition or a convection boundary condition at the outside. I'm choosing um, a name, I choose a type, um, I specify um, the outside temperature, the reference temperature, and um, the heat transfer coefficient. Then I um, assign it to the outside faces, which um, completes the boundary condition setup. I won't change anything, anything regarding the numerical settings. Um, but in simulation control, I choose a four-core machine and I um, increase the maximum runtime of the simulation. Last but not least, I'm creating an actual run. So I check the simulation and um, think of a simulation run of, uh, as a snapshot of your simulation setup. So the settings of this simulation setup are saved and um, I can check on it later at a later point in time. Um, to kick off the actual simulation job, I click the Start button. And again, the job status um, box in the lower left keeps me updated uh, about the progress of this simulation. Once the simulation run is finished, um, I get directly transferred back the simulation results and um, I can start visualizing the results. To do so, I switch to the post-processor tab. Um, where I can see that the solution fields are available for my for the run um, we just started. And by clicking on it, um, I can load the post-processing environment. Um, the initial view shows that uh, I have no color field chosen yet. Let's change that. Let's switch to um, the temperature color field or the temperature result field. Um, and I can see that uh, the temperature scalar field is loaded into the post-processor. Same for the heat flux, um, we can also get a visualization of the heat flux. And um, to get a more quantitative information, I can toggle the, um, the color scale. Um, and um, for sure, uh, the same works for the temperature. And um, to come to the last step of this tutorial, let's create a screenshot of this visualization, which appears on the left. And I can use now this screenshot in, um, for the automatic report generation of SimScale. Um, I create a new report. I um, check the contents that I, or the content that I want to have in my report. I click the Generate button and an automatic uh, report is uh, generated for me that contains the complete simulation setup as well as some automated screenshots of the results. This concludes the third tutorial of the Getting Started tutorial series of SimScale. And make sure you check out the other tutorials as well, and happy simulating.